Hi everybody, it's John Waite and I'm so thrilled to be here on the Waitrose YouTube channel. Now Christmas for me is a time of relaxation, but also a time of experimentation. And believe it or not, I've got a handful of vegan friends. And so to include them this year in my Christmas celebrations, I've created a fabulous show-stopping vegan Wellington. So I'm gonna start off first of all by roasting uh, some butternut squash and I'm gonna just Toss it in a little bit of olive oil, season quite generously with fine salt. I always use fine salt for cookery and then sea salt to finish and garnish. So that's all coated and into the oven it goes. Now, a lot of people think that vegan food is just, you know, the classic nut roast, a bit bland, but this Wellington, I'm not kidding, it has got so much flavor in there. I'm gonna take some pecan nuts and just pop them into a hot pan, a dry pan, but it's gonna be a nice hot pan because the toasting brings out all that fabulous flavor. If you don't like pecans, you could use walnuts, hazelnuts. So do give them a little bit of a toss. So as soon as your nuts are toasted, just decant them in one corner of the chopping board and let them cool down. The pan then goes back on the heat and to it, I'm gonna add a good glug of oil. And then to that, I've got my shrooms, my mushrooms and my leek. At this stage, the pan looks a little bit overwhelmed. But what's going to happen is mushrooms have so much water in them, it's just going to reduce in volume quite significantly. Now, to help these little babies along, I'm going to add just a pinch of salt. So all of this can be prepped in advance by a few days, kept in the fridge, you assemble the Wellington and then bake it. It's as simple as that. So normally at Christmas, we always go to my mum's house and she gets us all around this great big table, about 20 of us, and mum always ends up coming in with this great big golden turkey and she unveils it and plunks it on the table and we all go, oh, and oh. this Wellington actually, it's grand, it's glorious, it's a showstopper. You can plonk it on the table and everyone will go, ooh, I want a slice of that, love. While my leeks and shrooms do the thing over there, I'm gonna get some herbs chopped. You can't beat rosemary and sage at Christmas. Now, if you're not a fan of rosemary and sage, you could, of course, just use gentler herbs, such as parsley, a bit of thyme, maybe. I'm listening on my leeks, and they're sounding a bit drier, so let's mosey back on over. They do indeed look quite dry, and so with that in mind, I'm gonna lob in those herbs that I've chopped, along with a couple of garlic cloves, and then I'm gonna grate in some fresh nutmeg. That is pretty much done. I'm gonna decant this into a baking tray. All it's going to do is help to open up that surface area and cool that down a little bit more quickly. If you're not in a rush, you could just pop it into a bowl. Now this pan here has got a great deal of flavour in it and I want to get that flavour and use every last bit. So I'm going to take a bit of stock, this is vegetable stock, I'm going to pour it into the pan. And as soon as the stock comes to a boil, pour that onto your couscous. Give that a very quick stir just to coat it all and then I'm gonna cover that with a plate. And the heat from the stock is gonna cook the couscous. That's gonna sit there for about six to 10 minutes to cook and soak. My leeks and my mushrooms, well, they're gonna cool down. So while they do, I'm gonna go and have a chill. Right, the couscous is looking soaked and fluffy. So I'm just gonna fluff that up with my spatula. And then to that, I'm gonna add all the ingredients that I've prepared. Pecans, which I've toasted and chopped, followed by that butternut squash, which is perfectly roasted. In they go. I'm gonna mix all of this together and I'm gonna add a bit more stock just to juice things up a little bit more. So four tablespoons or 60 mils of stock and then about a tablespoon or so of marsala. And with any leftovers like the stock, for example, you could make a risotto with the stock. You could use it in anything pretty much. So don't worry, there's no need to waste anything. Don't forget when you season it at this stage, we already put a bit of salt in with the mushrooms and leeks. So go steady and season to taste. The only thing that I would add to this is the retro classic white pepper. If all you've got is black pepper, that's fine. But I find that white pepper has got even more of a kick to it. And the link to the full recipe for this, which I'm sure you want and need, is in the video description. So I'm gonna leave that to cool now. It won't take long, just a few minutes. I'll get my pastry rolled out, and then I will assemble what will be a show-stopping vegan Wellington. And I promise you, it'll be a show-stopper. The filling is cool, you'll be glad to hear, and I've got my pastry here, it's puff pastry, and I've got it rolled out. I've got a 15 by 30 centimetre rectangle here, and a slightly bigger rectangle there for the top, and you'll see why it needs to be bigger. Now my hands have been scrubbed to within an inch of their life, so don't worry, but you've got to get your hands in this recipe. So take fistfuls of the filling and compact it quite tightly into a thinnish log down the centre of the pastry. 
and it's really important that you leave a good inch or two at the sides and an inch at either end, but you can really go to town on the height. And if, of course, you have leftovers, this is really good just whacked in the microwave a little bit or even eaten cold with some fresh pickle lily. I'm going to just brush any filling that's tumbled to the sides, just brush it back into the middle. Then I'm going to take the slightly larger sheet of pastry and just very carefully plonk that on top. And what I like to do is just work it around that mound of filling to expel any extra air because you don't want to trap any air into this. What I'm going to do is then just trim off the excess pastry, leaving about two centimetres. That looks pretty, but I need to crimp it. I'm a man from Wigan, we crimp our pies. I'm gonna grab a bit of flour, dunk my fingers in, and then what you need to do is this. You've got your finger and your thumb, and you're gonna plonk your other finger in that groove there, and that will crimp. And please make sure you keep flour in your finger and your thumb. And that's looking pretty spectacular. So I'm gonna transfer the patient onto the baking sheet. The most challenging thing I encountered in writing a vegan Wellington recipe is what on earth do you use for an egg wash? Apparently coconut oil works well, and a dear friend of mine said to try adding some turmeric. And does that not look like an egg yolk? I'm going to take this golden juice and just paint it all over the Wellington. My Wellington's glazed, popped in the fridge for say half an hour, fresh out of the fridge, it's lovely and cold. All I want to do now is score it. I just do a simple chevron herringbone style. If you wanted to, you could do holly, you could do a Christmas tree, you could do the entire nativity scene. Now, obviously this is fully vegan, including the egg wash. If you were only serving this to vegetarians, you could indeed glaze this with an egg yolk. Right, into the oven. So while Wellington bakes, I'm gonna make a relish. Now this is just to go with it. If you want to serve it with the roast potatoes and all the trimmings you can do, but I think this needs something a bit special, something bejeweled and fabulous for Christmas. So in this bowl, I've got some pomegranate. I'm gonna add a finely chopped small red onion. Just to sweeten the deal, I'm gonna add a little bit of sugar, along with some sherry vinegar. Any vinegar would work fine though. And then to finish the relish off, some beautiful peppery green olive oil. Just a couple of tablespoons of that. And the ruby red pomegranate's just, well, it's like a Christmas bowl in itself, isn't it? That can be made in advance as well. Popped in the fridge, you'd be fine. And the longer you leave that, the more everything macerates in the sugar and it gets even more flavorful. Right, let's check on that Wellington. So look at this, it looks beautifully golden because of that turmeric. Then just to give it a bit of a shine, because obviously an egg wash would stay shiny, I'm gonna finish it off with just a little bit more melted coconut oil. And this is really flavorless, so don't panic. It won't taste totally tropical, but it will give it that beautiful eggy shine. So there you have it. I mean, even the most ferocious carnival would probably be enticed by that. It's impressive, it's beautiful, it looks like you've gone to effort. And I hope that you enjoy making it, and I hope that you and your family enjoy eating it. Merry Christmas.